Welcome to Module 6 in 288M. And we're still in Chapter 6. We actually split up Chapter 6 into Module 5 and 6. And that's because it covers two very different types of technologies, and we did not want it to be overwhelming. So we talked in Module 5 about routing remote access, being a turning your Windows server into a router, and we also talked about direct access. So now we're going to talk about how to implement routing and remote access. So let's take a look and get started. We're going to describe what remote access is and install and configure the remote access server. So what is remote access? It is a server role that provides services to keep a mobile workforce and branch offices securely connected. So the way I've always used a routing remote access is uh, as either a, as a router or as a VPN server. But you can also use it as a site-to-site -site VPN server, where one uh, Windows server connects to another Windows server across a uh, site. Now, typically, I have not done this in, um, in industry, and that's because the firewalls themselves are capable of doing this in most cases, say a, a, Win a Cisco firewall and SonicWall and some of the other ones. So I've been able just to use the, the firewalls for the site-to-site -site VPN connections. But client-to-site, uh, Windows, I think, does a better job because all of the tools, all the, the clients that you need for VPN are all built into the operating system. You don't have to install a third-party application that may slow the computer down, such as with uh, Cisco VPN, you have to install the Cisco VPN client as well as SonicWall and others. And uh, they make the computers just run more slowly, and they're also very buggy and difficult to troubleshoot. And if you have to call Microsoft about it, they'll say, hey, that's not our problem, it's Cisco's problem, and Cisco says the same thing about Microsoft. So uh, it's easier if you do client to site where you know some stay from your home or from your hotel into your office. That would be client to site uh, type of VPN using the Windows server. So there's a lot of reasons, like I said, for using it. Work from home employees, frequent travelers, business partners, and branch offices. Sometimes we've set up a VPN from contractors to a VPN in from their location so they can get access to, to do jobs. So we've got uh, lots of different uh, things in remote access. We've got the virtual private network, uh, remote dial-in, which we don't use anymore so much. You know, not many people use uh, dial-in, but there are a few remote, uh, sh uh, like job shacks, things like that, that may still need to use that. Uh, network address translation, which we talked a little bit about in the last module, and direct access VPN, which we also talked about in the last module, which is a type of VPN that Microsoft implemented and is now backing away from because it doesn't work the way they had hoped. So we need to install the remote access role. Uh, so we go to server manager, and we can either um, install it from the add uh, roles and features, or we can use the install Windows feature uh, PowerShell commandlet. So either one of those uh, will work for us. And there's three different roles. There's the direct access and VPN. So even if you're not using direct access but using a type of VPN, then you have to choose that option. Or routing, which we'll be doing, uh, or the web application proxy. And uh, this, this is uh, something we're not going to be doing, but just so you can be aware of this, it publishes web-based applications for use by clients outside your network. So VPN, it's a network connection, uses the internet to give mobile users or branch offices secure access to the company's resources. And it does this using uh, what's called a tunnel, and it's a method of transferring data across an unsecured network. So between my Comcast connection at home and my, uh, say, uh, level three connection at the office, that's considered an unsecured public uh, access. So in order to make it secure, I can use VPN. So this is a picture of a VPN setup. Uh, we have on the right-hand side the VPN client using the secure VPN tunnel across the unsecured internet connection. Goes through the firewall into the VPN server. Now, once again, as I talked about earlier, if you're using, say, a Cisco or some other commercial product, the firewall itself could be the destination for the VPN server. But if you're using completely a, a Windows solution, then you have a Windows VPN server behind the firewall, and you port forward that traffic through the firewall to the Windows VPN server. And from there, the VPN client can access all of those different servers that you see behind the VPN server. So you can get access to, to anything that you want them to have access to. You can also block access to things as well. So there's lots of different types of VPN that, that Microsoft Windows Server 2016 supports. There is the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. This is the oldest one 
uh, that, that's out there that Windows supports. And over the years, it has been upgraded, but it's still considered not a very secure way of doing things. But it is the easiest to set up. You don't really hardly have to do anything to do it. And there's a layer two tunneling protocol. It uses IPsec. It has a higher level of security, uh, but the problem is that it is blocked by a lot of hotels and businesses. And then you've got SSTP. This is one of the newer ones, and it works uh, in just about any location because it uses SSL, Secure Socket Layer, which is the same technology you would use if you were, say, shopping on the Internet. So it uses a certificate, public certificate, or uh, a certificate issued by a public key infrastructure server on the inside of your network that is trusted, and it will connect uh, you know, through using port 443, which is not blocked by anybody. So all of those are available and supported. It also supports uh, Ike V2, which is another one uh, that is going to be, that is a very older, uh, old technology that's going to be popular once again with the always connected Windows 10 VPN that's uh, coming. Uh, your server and network must meet the requirements for the type of VPN you want. So if you're doing a uh, VPN in your network and, one, and your uh, VPN server is on the internet, then you need to have two network cards. If it's uh, behind a firewall, then it doesn't have to. You can just use the one network card. Uh, but uh, if, you have, if it is connected, you know, where you have a public IP address on one side and a private on the other, you have to have two network cards. You've got to configure the firewall on the Windows server to be able to accept the, uh, the traffic. You have to set up authentication, and you do have to have DHCP to give the client an internal IP address from your network onto their computer. So we've got to configure the perimeter network. Uh, it's the boundary between the private and the public network. So that is a quiz alert that you're going to see something like that on your quiz. Firewall must be configured to allow certain types of traffic. So you can take a look at pages 229 and 30. Depending on the type of VPN you're using, each VPN uses a different, type, different uh, TCP port or UDP port to communicate. If the VPN server is a domain member, its computer account must be added to the RAS and IAS servers group in Active Directory. Otherwise, it won't be properly trusted. Uh, standard VPN server, select remote access, dial-up, or VPN option. And uh, here is what it looks like. So uh, what, what you can do is you can choose remote access, dial up VPN, but that's only if you're using a, the two network configuration. If your server is behind the firewall, you would not use that option. You would use the custom configuration uh, where you would just choose VPN only. Otherwise, you end up um, having NAT installed with one of these other options. In the VPN connection window, select the interface that connects the server to the internet. So you got to choose which one is the public facing network card. Uh, you can rename network connections, enable security on the selected interface by setting up static packet filters. So this prevents the interface connected to the internet from accepting any traffic that's not VPN, which you know, helps with security. So here's what it looks like again with the two cards set up. You've got the internet card and you've got the private network card. Now this shows um, private on both sides and that's certainly a, an option if you end up with an additional subnet between your Windows VPN server and the firewall. You can set up a non-public subnet there as sort of a, a buffer between the outside world and the inside world. All right, then you've got the IP address assignment. You can uh, have it automatically pull from the DHCP server or you can pull from a specified range of addresses. So my experience is that the DHCP server option doesn't always work, but the specified uh, range of IP addresses does. So uh, in the real world, you may end up having to do that. So now we need to decide how the clients are authenticated. You can use uh, Active Directory or you can use a RADIUS server. So RADIUS uh, has been around for a long time. It's very secure. Uh, it does use a component of Active Directory if you want it to, but it adds some additional security on that. And it, it can use certificates as well. After you click Finish in the summary window, you see a message saying you must configure a DHCP relay agent. So you do this uh, if you configured automatic IP addressing and the DHCP server is not on the same subnet. And we talked about DHCP in, I believe, Module 4. So here's what that looks like. 
So you can either use the um, routing remote access to authenticate connection requests, which just goes right to Active Directory, or you can use a RADIUS server, which requ requires additional setup. I've done this both ways. Um, I find that the simplest way to do this is using the routing remote access way to go right to Active Directory. But if you're using the RADIUS server, it does give you that additional layer of security. After finishing our RAS, the VPN server is ready to start accepting VPN uh, client connections. So then you need to say, okay, who's allowed to use it and who's not? Well, strangely enough, you, one of the ways to allow people to use this is to go into the dial-up setting, the dial-in connections in the, uh, the Windows user. So you can go to Active Directory Users and Computers, double-click on the user, and then you go to the dial-in tab. And in the dial-in tab, you would then uh, choose to allow uh, the user to dial in. Even though we're not using phones anymore, uh, for the most part, maybe there's a few out there still doing it, uh, you still have to give them dial-in permissions. Now, the other option is to use what's called the network policy server, and this is a little bit newer and a little bit more secure. So you can create a special policy that not only allows who can come in and who can't, but you can also set up a health credential setup where you say, uh, you are only allowed VPN if you are this user or in this group, and if your firewall is turned on, your anti-malware software is up to date, and any other uh, you know, configuration things that you want them to have before allowing them onto the network. So that does give you a lot of extra control to keep viruses from getting onto your network. Configure each user's account policy, uh, properties in AD uh, or the local users and group if, to allow remote access. So if it's not an Active Directory server that's doing VPN, you can use a local users and groups uh, to allow that in or not. So by default, uh, controlling through the network policy server is the option that's set up. But by also by default, the um, network policy server is turned, uh, turned to disable all users. So you have to go in and enable them. So here is the look of the allow access for the dial-in tab, as I mentioned earlier or you can deny access or control it through the network policy service. VPN client is configured by setting up a new connection in Network and Sharing Center. So on the client itself, you have to go set this up. Now, if you're using direct access, you don't have to do that. But as I mentioned, a lot of companies are moving away from direct access because it doesn't work right. So on the client itself, you can go and set up this VPN client and you connect to a workplace uh, in the network and sharing center. And then you go through the wizard until you get the configuration set up. So this is a little bit how that looks. A server supporting remote dial-in must have one modem connected to a phone line. And again, a lot of people don't use this, but hey, you still need to understand the way the technology works. So remote dial-in is configured almost the same way as VPN. Uh, network selection, choose the private network, what the phone number is to dial in, and you have to, of course, have a modem on your uh, computer as well as on your server. Uh, routing remote access also multiple allows multiple tunneling types by default for VPN connections. As I mentioned earlier, it has PPTP, SSTP, uh, which is that SSL version, uh, as well as uh, the L2TP, which uses IPsec. So to configure security settings for remote access, you right-click the server in uh, Routing Remote Access and click the Properties. So in the Security tab, you can see you can configure lots of different things. Go ahead and choose what it is that you want. It's actually a lot more complicated uh, than what it's going to show here. If you're going to use point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, as I said, that's the easiest, it's the oldest, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not considered secure anymore, but you don't really have to do anything to set it up once you install routing remote access. It's just set up. But every other one could take hours and hours to set up properly, to test, make sure it works right and is secure. So here is the option under security in the routing remote access uh, properties. So by default, you see it's going to use Windows authentication, but if you hit that drop down, you could change that to radius. And then once you choose the authentication provider, you have to choose the accounting provider. And so that's for the IPsec policy. Uh, you can use a pre-shared key or a certificate at that point. Site-to-site -site VPN securely connects to networks. So as you see here, you've got a VPN server and a firewall and a VPN server and a firewall. 
So the VPN connection is between the two servers, and the firewall just passes the traffic between them. And uh, again, in, in my experience, normally I would just set up the firewall for the site to site, but that doesn't mean that your clients are all going to do that or your employer is going to do that. They may, or you may choose to use the Windows VPN option. So you do need to know about that. So that is how we, uh, the, what we do with routing remote access in Windows Server 2016 and the different types of VPNs that are out there. And that concludes our Module 6 lecture. So go ahead and we'll start working on your labs for this particular one. I think a lot of people will really enjoy setting up uh, you know, the Windows servers as routers. And um, go ahead and take your quiz. Don't forget to always come back to the slides as well as the reading material when you take your quiz because it is open book and all the answers are either going to be in the slides or in the reading itself.